All right, guys, welcome back. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into 2024 week three, which I think is mid-January. Absolutely horrendous January from memory. Um, not enjoying doing the back testing series for this because it's just got a lot of horrible memories in it. Um, but we're going to jump to the H4 condenser charts, go back to where the line is and um, back test from there. So I've left the chart markups up, which is good, but I would always recommend to everybody... Where is it? There it is. I'd always recommend to try to start the week with a blank chart. Okay, you want to look at a blank chart um, and do your markups fresh. But just to save time on these videos at the moment, because I am really crammed for time personally, um, that we, you know, we're just going to use the, the markups from previously. But I will start clearing these off again. So as always, we start off on the weekly. Okay, so we'll just start off on the weekly right here and see if there's any order blocks or points of interest available to us, okay? So there's this one here, which looks like they've pretty much rebalanced. There's one right there. Nothing really to note down there. There's one down here, okay? So weekly should be the yellow. Yeah, so yellow there. Um, and I haven't got that as a weekly, but it is kind of interesting. So I'm just gonna mark that up. I know it's not, you know, there's been no breaker structure or anything, um, but just the, the pin bar into this and then the aggressive candle afterwards and then a doji um, kind of rebalancing it. It's still of interest. So it may not be an order block just yet, but it's still of interest. Hence, POI point of interest. We might get a, a decent reaction out of it. And there's a daily within there too. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into... Oh, by the way, direction. Weekly chalk is still up there and weekly boss is down here. So our last structural change was right there you know chalk up top boss down the bottom drop down to the daily take a look any change on our daily pois no exactly the same sideways movement well diagonal sideways which means um, what we have is a channel so nice push up press down sideways channel drop usually the case um, which is what we were anticipating and i think it did happen um, but i don't remember where or when, um, but it was somewhere. It felt like this went on for weeks though, so we might just see a really, really boring video. Hopefully not, but I will try to talk you through the um, the patterns, the, the the general price action, which I know and what I've learned through experience. So I'll try and talk you through everything which was in my thought process at the time, from what I can remember, um, but I've really just tried to block out from memory. Very, very poor January for well, for me personally, well, eight trades in a row I lost and I didn't pick up a single winner. So I took eight trades, lost eight trades. Uh, whereas this week, just gone, six trades, eight winners, over 55 R. Um, I got more in percent because I'm trying to flip accounts at the moment. Because um, I don't want to rely on prop firms because they have screwed so many people over recently. It is unreal. There's a trader in FTR who I think has lost about $600,000 in funding um, due to all the regulation changes and stuff. And that may not be the prop firm's faults, but there are prop firms who have been messing people around as well. And they've lost accounts because of silly little rules. So I'm trying to teach people now to grow your personal account as fast as you can, um, as reliably as you can, by the way. Stick to the plan, stick to what we do at FTR, and you'll do absolutely fine. I got 55 or 56 R this past week. I haven't calculated it yet. 55 or 56 R, and I got about 380 percent. Okay, so you know, I'm using between four and 11 percent risk. I can do that because I've got a decent win rate and I know exactly what I'm looking for in the markets. Um, so yeah, I should never have to rely on a prop firm again. So daily, everything's in its place, it's fine. H4, let's go. Oh, by the way, if you're unsure about that, I've shared all my trades in the group uh, ahead of getting into trades so people know what I'm in. Well, I'm not in, so no bullshit on that alert. Um, we have, yeah, okay, so, sorry, daily direction. Where were we? Didn't do that. So daily boss was up, daily chalk was down here. Okay, so technically we're still up um, for daily. We don't, to be fair, we don't really use the daily. We use it for a confluence for general direction and really imbalances. Okay, so just like imbalance and then a rebalance because you'll quite often get a reaction off the rebalance. But other than that, you know, it's 
we don't really use it. H4 anyway, uh, see if there's any new PLIs. Nope, there are no new PLIs on the H4. So we're left to the 15. Okay, so all of this is still accurate. We're still left on the 15. Okay, so we should be looking at longs if we can. Um, but we will have to be taking shorts and going counter trend because it is so choppy. But the market does happen, you know, it does happen like this. And it's not necessarily a cycle. It's not just because it was like a lull January. Uh, sometimes it happens in December. Sometimes that happens in August. You just have to trade through these periods, okay? There's a lot of people who have said like, oh, you know, fundamentally everything was flat. Like, who cares? Like, if you've got a trading strategy, you stick to it, okay? Like, you never know when the market is going to kick back into action. You just need to be there and ready and waiting, okay? So we were quite aware with this. Oh, there's an odd bot there, which we could have. Anyway, <laughs> so we're all aware that the market should drop down, okay? <clears throat> so following the uh, higher time frame with that, uh, what was it, that channel, like the market went like this, like what if you got like a 60 odd percent chance that the next move is going to be down? Like we just, we just wanted to be involved in the market, ready to be the ones to catch it down, okay? So... We were quite aware of what was going on um but even though the market conditions are very choppy it was just wicking us out of positions and then taking off without us you still have to trade through those conditions okay like if you're a professional trader you still have to trade um you don't take stupid trades we try not to uh, this would be a trade to take up counter trend uh, not particularly fantastic but still you would do it I feel like I want to check the H4 again already because I didn't pay attention. Oh no, we did say there is no H4 above us. So take profit is counter trend. Probably just, oh, I'd even go to there. Because the, oh no, no, sorry, H4 boss. Target could be up there, but just take the swings. Why, What? Oh, by the way, why am I looking to just take a swing or maybe even just that one? Hmm. I'd be tempted to just take that because there's so much below us. There's one down here. Sorry, I didn't do this. I didn't check the M15. There's one down here. Okay, be aware of that. And whatever's in that wick, probably nothing. Um, but because there is one below us, and we have chocked multiple times, just take the nearest, you know, viable profit target, right? Which is going to be that. It's actually going to be supply on that time frame, which isn't enough for me to want to take. Uh, one to four, perfect. Okay, see if we can get in. What time is it? Midnight? Yeah, I'd probably take that trade anyway in real life. I love a nice Asian session trade. Hey, how long has it been since we started off with a winner? It's only four, but it's a win. Okay, so I'll take that. If you guys are in FTR or if you're thinking about joining, the link is below. I'm quite often trading around about midnight. Um, it's just very soft movements most of the time. Like the size of the candlesticks are very small. You don't have much of a chance of breaking through an order block, especially if it's a decent one. Um, take trades off them all day long. Well, all night long. It's my favorite session to trade. I oh, don't say we're reacting from this. I think I mentioned in the last video that that was a potential OB. If it is, let's see if we'd be in it. Not yet, but yes, we would have that marked up to go short from. And then take that, take that to the swing right there. Or maybe, because we do have a new order block here, We'd want to try to get long off of that. All right, let me clear this up a little bit. Okay. Some of you will be asking, why are you just looking to like have a gap between entering and exiting a trade? It's because quite often we'll just go to a rebalance and then reverse. Um, and if I don't get tagged in, it's fine. Um, but the 0.25 is mathematical. Like, you know, if we've got, I think it was 28% of a, of a range, of a candle range, was the median average over 
I think it was about 350 trades when I was doing all my learning and, and like figuring all of this out. So yeah, it just made sense. Anyway, we're not in that trade coming down just yet. And I'm conscious of the time, like London spike and then down. It's not a strong area, by the way, not particularly strong. I'd say that this is stronger. Um, and in which case I will mark this up. I only go to the inside bar now that we've done a lot more vigorous testing on the inside bar in FTR, which is really good. Um, but yeah, I'll just I'll mention FTR at the moment. I don't talk about it very often. A lot of people join and say like, oh, you, know, you don't do it enough justice. You don't really talk about it often enough um, on YouTube. But it's probably one of the better trading communities out there. Like the feedback of uh, people who come from places, oh, I can't really say where they've come from, but they come from other like big trading communities and they're like blown away by what we do. Um, it's quite quiet sometimes because there is nothing to do between trades. But then other times people are getting involved in backtesting. I've got a load of backtesting modules in there. There's loads of stuff in there which isn't on YouTube. Um, it's, it doesn't mean that I've held anything back from you off of YouTube, um, but I just go into more detail on the videos on there. There's mentoring which goes on in there. I've got a equivalent to me, a guy called Sam Somerville. He is, I think he learned how to trade through my YouTube videos. He joined FTR about a year and a half ago. Absolutely phenomenal trader. He sees the market instinctively, just like me. He's more risk averse, I would say. So he, he doesn't get in as many trades, but his win rate is higher than mine. Um, so yeah, really good. And there's there's a group of us um, called, what say what they are? <laughs> it was, I made the, the name before it was a, a thing to, like a phrase, but, um, or a popular phrase to use. But, all right, so that one's not going to take place. But anyway, they're all like the trusted traders who I know trade extremely well. Um, <clears throat> it's just a pleasure. It's just a real pleasure in FTR. I'm not in there all the time. Uh, I've got a lot of childcare during the week, which I have to do, so... And that's a pleasure to do as well, by the way. But, you know, I'm busy a lot of the time doing dad duty, which is good. Um, but we've got people like Sam, Sean, there's all sorts. Jazz, Louis, etc. There's a lot in the group. And um, really phenomenal traders, by the way. Uh, yeah. Let's just keep on clicking. I was thinking, is that one worth doing? No, not with that recovery. I'm going to have to take a restock of to where we are in a second because I'm not sure. Uh, maybe one more candle. Okay, H4, let's see. Okay, so the market is wicked up, took whatever it could out of there, swept, pressed down, pressing down, closed bullish on that one. Could be the start of a press down, so really we want to try and get short. That makes sense now. Okay, we'll try and get short off of that. Um, and I will try, I'll tell you what, we'll look at the daily. So that's another place where we do check the daily, like at the end of the day. Um, we'll get to there and then we'll check the daily and see how it appears. But really, I'm only interested in getting short at the moment. All right, I'll check daily. Let's see how it appears. Bearish-ish, rubbish, very, very weak. Okay, not fantastic, not very helpful with directional flow. This is the H4, also looks very weak. Uh, sweep liquidity grip doesn't look fantastic still short needs to be my bias because of this being a sweep it was just so confusing like it was so so confusing oh okay right so also i think on my broker this okay this has caused confusion because in the last two videos including this one we've had boss up here and chopped down there i'm pretty certain my broker feed did not have this as a break or it may have been half a pip or something like that, but I just did not count that as a break. So we had chalk up there, boss down here, chalk extended to there. So we were banking on it going short and paying attention to what had happened cash flow, cash flows, um, order flow wise, 
the market was just screaming that it wants to break down. Um, so yeah, we were all expecting it to go down, knowing that we were possibly doing counter trend, possibly doing pro trend. We just weren't entirely sure. But the new rule change of Boston Chalk was really quite helpful to us, even though we still weren't sure entirely with the market direction, we knew that we could still take profit out of the market if we just stick to our general plan and we just go into um, a very safe level of risk reward ratio. So that's what we were doing. Um, let's just keep going. We've got a load of liquidity up there, liquidity down here. We've got like this little, is it called a wedge? Um, break out, push up one way, press back down. What time is it? Spread hours coming up so you wouldn't take a trade anyway. There we go, drop Asia, yeah. Wow, I normally say Asia is just really quiet and soft, but there was nothing there but liquidity. There was, uh, you know, possibly that you may have thought of, but we'd swept, or well, we hadn't swept, we'd um, rebalanced this during the spread hours, so there was nothing until we got down to that bit. Which if we're going pro trend, I guess you would take. So we'll mark that up as a trade that we'll take. I'm pretty certain it doesn't work out. We'll go to the nearest swing on the, on the current time frame that we're on. So just go around here. Mm, about there, I would say one to four, not great. It's rare that I'll take a one to four these days. You'd be punching out. Yeah, you'd have punched out of that trade. Hang on, what time was it entering at? Uh, Asian, okay, you wouldn't be punching out. You'd wake up to a stop loss. Fair enough. And that is fine because it happens because that's trading and that's life. So another minus right there. I can close that up. shrink this we've still got that up there to get short from possibly and some red news a zoo sent whatever that is never heard of it and then london probably yeah all right so london open probably clicked a bit too fast uh, that would have been an entry was that an entry did i take that trade I want to say that I'd taken that. You know what? I didn't because I got losses. <laughs> that looks like I would have taken that though if I was available. Oh well. May have been the one, one of the ones that I'd cancelled. I'll have to check in the group and go back and check on the notes and stuff, but pretty sure that would have been a trade that I punched out of. Um, I may have shouted that out into the group. So, liquidity sweep at the start of Asia. Uh, sorry, start of London. Almost go to breakout, close the trade off. Yeah, I think it was probably that. But anyway, we've got uh, H4, well, we've got chalk. We've broken down on the chalk line, but we need to get a body break on the H4 uh, to confirm it. And as it's only 11 o'clock, we've got to go to um, here to confirm. And if we are above the line, by the time we get to this red line, it's just chalk with a wick. Um, and if we're below it, it's chalk with a body. Okay, so it massively affects us. We've also got this to get short from. Almost went straight over that. And I'm also gonna put on an end of the day one here, which I don't do very often. Because it's a lot easier, sorry, easier with live trading to to just mark up the end of the day. Um, ooh, missed that. Oh well, didn't work anyway. Oh, and how do I get that wrong? Okay, that was in the wrong place. Oh, I'm gonna have to check the H4 anyway. I'm not even sure. Looks to me like a body break. Oh, 
let's go back boss and chalk can change so let's switch okay so boss and chalk real quickly this goes to where the boss line was boss goes to where it needs to be now that goes up there because it's the furthest point we are now facing down okay and while we're here let's look at the h4 is there anything that we're missing there's that which is a bit of a funky move um i remember that being a little bit confusing but i'm pretty sure we had a trademark off of that uh, which we do at the moment which is cool and that's about it imbalance leading to it imbalance above uh and then that trade up there which i don't think ever got triggered I'm not sure i can't remember can't remember fully i don't think it's come up today yet um but anyway at least i can get rid of that line but yeah we've got this to short from and we've potentially got this to short from as well which i would be inclined to do just check and see if it's like a support resistance area yeah i would probably say looking at these don't know if i noticed it you know in real time trading conditions but it kind of makes sense with this price action oh my days <laughs> horrible coming up to six in the evening end of day go one more we even go one more did that just change again i swear i didn't put these in the wrong place anyway let's look at the daily i thought i'd just gone through it then but i haven't okay so that was a bit of a sell-off so yeah there we are um press down and then go so exactly what was expected press down sideways shuffle it's like a what's called a diagonal range and then a press down that's normally what happens so check back on the h4 oh sorry back to the daily poi um it's not pretty <laughs> nah not cool Anyway, H4. And yeah, you see this. Um, yeah, more inclined to say that one over this one. But there's historically. Okay, both of them. I'd have to say both. But I remember in um, in January, I was just trading scared. Like, you know, I was doing really well. I had a, what, like a um, an account verification to go with the prop firms. Like, it was nice and easy probably best december uh, best december for a couple of years that i'd had and i was just like you know flying high and then january came and it was just like oh this is ridiculous and then all the news about the prop firms it we just did not know what was going on you know it was horrendous i can't blame the prop firms for for what happened like you know draw down on a, a daily limit but whatever uh so 5 in the morning we have two trades here Gonna have to see where I would set targets if we get into any of these. Mm. One more candle. Right, H4, where can we go? Down to here. All right, so target's gonna have to be the daily rebalance. So it's base, basically a case of get short if we can. Uh, it looks like a fairly decent distance away. 36 ish pips all right let's just click on okay minus one. Oh, let's just let's just do an x on there i can't be bothered to draw it on all right so one loss what would you do there Ooh, that doesn't look good hmm oh <laughs> You know what, I will draw it on briefly. Because <clears throat> otherwise we'll just get a little bit confused in a little bit when doing the markups. Or the, the price ups or whatever we want to call it. So this will be going down. Let me just see where you would be able to take profit. Would you be able to take it on the nearest swing? Yes. But you'd want to target here. If you could. 
I can get rid of that now because that was a bit confusing. Uh, I'd be nervous of this price action if I was in it, but there's nothing I'd be able to do because I would be in it. Oh man. Even more nervous now. And a re entry. Okay, re entry offer there, possibly again. Uh, pro trend, yes, but we haven't had broker structure, so it'd be risky. Decent price action, but I don't like how close this is coming in. If you're on a prop firm, you'd have been blown out of that position, probably. And what is this? Retail sales, who cares? Uh, I don't know if it's a big news event or not. It would be the next candle. I don't know if it's a big news event. Uh, I would say, like what I would normally do is I'd go back and check and see how how much the market moves, but we're just, we're not gonna do that for this. Um, Cause if it was like a 20 pip mover, like what's 20 pips from right here? like here or there like you know it's not enough to really hurt your account if it's only like 20 pips oh look at that yeah it was about 15. not even that oh it was 20. that's funny okay yeah so 20. so yeah we're in this which is cool that doesn't look good because it's just kind of swept maybe we should have taken profit there knowing that there's so many order blocks behind us but i'd just be so eager just to get it over with um, we're going to hold this one, oh, regretfully. There's another order block right there, let me look. Really, I'd want to get a body break and then probably try off of this one. Okay, okay, cool. Try and get in off of that, get a scale in. Oh my god, why do I say that? I would definitely be doing that. That's now putting this one in danger as well. Just got to roll with the punches sometimes. Oh, it's looking bad. The time have a feeling I was in this trade. Yeah, I was in this. Hot. Minus, yeah, pretty sure I took that. I seem to remember thinking, oh, I was up like five or six R, like, you know, I should have just taken my profit, but you can't do that at the end of the day. Like you can do that, but you shouldn't do that. You should just hold your trades to completion. It's highly frustrating. We're already again back on the losing week, which to be fair, was expected um, but it's good to go back over and just see you know what's going on um, you know is there anything that we could have done better is there anything that we could have been wiser with like this looks like we've had an h4 change so would we be getting short here i'm not sure bear with me i want to check uh, we've got another two candles um, but we'll just check and see what the h4 is doing okay hmm Look at all these wicks, just in the middle of nowhere, reacting from nothing. Um, I know somebody's going to talk about an ICT fair value gap, like nobody cares. Um, it means absolutely nothing. It just happens sometimes. Uh, but that's the one which I do. They're both valid. Um, yeah, I'll be looking to get short off of these. Sorry, that wasn't to be rude. It's just... Um, you know, once you turn from amateur to pro, you understand. In. Target. Down here. You'd probably just go to this though, to be fair. The, with everything going on, because we've chopped up, you'd want to just continue boss down there. I want to check again can't really oh well that would be my target what day are we on thursday okay nearly three not doing too bad ah i was gonna say you, if you'd missed that one i know it's early in the morning like it wouldn't be everybody who takes this trade but we had the mini breaker structure chalk off we'd entered this area another trade off of there perhaps uh you know 
if you'd have missed this one. Bit risky, but hey. Oof. On the border. Right, I'm just going to check the high of that. 9068. 9067. You'd still be in if you're using something like IC Markets, which is what I use, so that's perfectly fine. Zero spreads. Oh, link is in the description if you want to use them as a broker. Um, nope, not yet. Hmm, maybe I should have done. No, nah, it doesn't quite fit my plan. Like, I know it makes sense to have taken a short off of this. Like, it, it does make sense to. Like, that's the support resistance area. Uh, but we didn't really have a broker structure to give us the confirmation that we wanted to continue in this direction. So... Um, I am going to say, though, that this stands out to me now. Um, and just to explain that, we got the breaker structure here. This is the last one, which has transferred, transferred all the energy. Um, the way which I see it anyway is that energy or, you know, orders or liquidity moves from here to here to here to here. And it's left behind. But it's only a wick. There wasn't a body on that. But we did get a good sell-off as a result. Uh, why is H4 boss right here? Because I haven't moved it. Right. Sorry about this. I'm not meant to confuse you guys. Oh, here we go. Right, you're quite jolly in that trade now. Building permits. Yeah, you wouldn't care about that news either. Right, so H4. Let's see where we're at with H4. Sorry, I didn't realise. Um, I'm Ah, that's why. So H4, boss went down to there. Which means that if we get a break of that on the next H4, H4 chalk moves to here, which makes this one counter trend. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. Please just break down. <laughs> you can feel yourself get competitive doing this, even though we're just trying to gather a bit of data. A little bit of backtesting, but a little bit of data. A lot of people would ask, would you be holding your trade throughout all of this? Um, most of the time I would. Um, I had to go through some horrendous drawdowns this week, but I held on to my trades and I ended up bagging a, I think it was like 39 or 40R or something like that trade. Um, and I was fairly public about that in FTR. Uh, I would, oh, that would be risky. I'll check the... Gonna go back just to have a look at the H4. How fast did it recover? It doesn't look very fast. Doesn't look great with that work. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take the trade off of that as well. Let's take it there. Like, the next H4 zone is miles away, I think. So we're just playing towards boss and chalk. While we get out of this ridiculous, horrible range, um, and just get the market rolling in again. Right, would we be in? Conscious about London coming up because it sweeps sometimes or it just breaks out. That's why it looks like it's not in. Oops. All right, we'd be in <coughs> literally picture perfect. That's a long way to go. And we're still in that trade, by the way. Looks like it's going to be a minus two coming up. Don't say there's no winners, right? Was that last week? Oh, it was a win right at the start of the week, but it could be horrendous. But, you know, on equity, you'd have been up quite a lot this week, but you'd be very sulky. Um, I know I would be. Well, actually, no, to be fair, I wouldn't, because I know to follow the strategy just inside out now. Um, Especially over the last, what, like a couple, two, three months, I've done pretty well. 
Uh, <clears throat> so you're going to get losing weeks. That's the thing. Like you are going to get losing weeks. Just look at this though. We've got all that liquidity, like just a spike up, probably take that out as well because it's kind of rebalanced the area and then get into, ah, yeah. Okay. So a bit of a concept to explain. Okay. It is a bit of a concept. I'll do that with a, a wider line, but let's do this bread, uh, make it fat. So we've got our, our zonal range kind of like that. I know bosses there. We haven't quite got chalk here yet, but it does make sense for the market to aggressively push up, grab the last bit of liquidity, which is inside of this, uh, this order block here and then press down and continue down. Okay. It happens every so often. Um, I think that we would have been aware. Well, I'm pretty sure that we would have been aware of it. I don't remember if it happens. Um, I'm just hoping that these end up as winners. So I don't have to have the humiliating thing of writing another minus on uh, on the YouTube thumbnail. But I don't mind it actually, to be fair. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the comments are. So that one is, uh, yeah, 100% in and looking a little bit scary. Oh my days, look at that. You, just as you think you're back in the clear, it scares you again. And this is why you don't, by the way, you don't move your stuff to break even ever. Uh, you, yeah, but there are exceptions, like if you're doing a prop challenge or something like that, like fine, I get it. Um, but just don't move your stuff to break even because quite often you leave behind an order block. Yeah. So that order block was left behind. Um, this was your entry. You'd be so tempted just to move it back to break even because it was like a, a pinpoint accuracy entry. And then you'd have been stopped out by this. And then if you got into there, you'd have been stopped out by that. You know, it's just, just don't move your stop loss. There's, there's no point in protecting, you know, just plus one when you get you know plus 10 plus 15 and you know last week got you know plus 40 ish um because every now and then you will get knocked out and that's fine it's just minus one who cares uh, so that's minus one almost tempted to release these two videos side by side or stitch them together and you have to do it once Oof, and then we finish up on about that 1.37. Ouch. So we've got another losing week. January was painful. So we got, uh, yeah, from here one, two, three, four, five, six losers. We got a plus four, and we'd be up about 1.4 or something like that. So again, minus maybe one. Uh, so to be fair, coming to think of it, that previous week was like minus one or two. This is minus one or two. For two weeks, that's not too bad. Um, you know, it's not too bad. So yeah, in the grand scheme of things, January so far, minus four, which is pretty much on par with what I did personally. Um, even though I just didn't do well, uh, had no winners. Um, it's kind of about right. But anyway, uh, subscribe. We're going to continue doing... Um, up to present day where once I get to present day I'm going to switch things up a little bit I'm going to start introducing another currency pair rather than just EU and I might give you trade of the week or I might even share the occasional video which I do to my group in FTR onto here so you know we'll see it but it'll be a zoom call so just prepare yourself um, for language <laughs> anyway leave you guys to it good luck trading catch you soon